or 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 take the praise for what it is or understand that okay if i do this it's gonna be more trouble than it's worth that's right you know so a moment of instant gratification. That was Samuel L. Jackson's alleged reaction to talks about Steve Harvey being compared to Bernie Mac. Why would he react like this, you ask? Well, let's just say he and Bernie go way back. I knew he was having some health issues and I was really concerned about him, but he would look at me every day and say, I'm good, let's go, let's hit it. And we would hit it. And uh, it was a joy to work on that movie with Bernie. But even outside his relationship with Bernie Mac, the comic seems to have genuinely been a good person from within, and he proved it countless times. Better, and I think if you focus on being the best within yourself, all that stuff will come. Right. I hear people say, get your money on, get your money on. I hate that. I hate, I mean, and, and that's your motivation. And then here's what the person who's being compared to Mac talks about. Listen to me, rich people think differently. So what I'm gonna put in your head today it's a rich people concept, so you can get to understand it. The only difference between successful people and not is just how they think. To most people outside showbiz, we usually expect that all the successful people in the industry are probably besties, being that they're all very wealthy and are usually in similar lines of work. But it seems wealth might be the last consideration for Samuel L. Jackson to get along with Steve Harvey. Knowing Jackson and his knack for being funny, you'd think his distance from Harvey is about something as simple as the host's mustache, but it seems his disdain might run much deeper, and it all leads back to Bernie Mac. You see, most people know Harvey and Mac had a relationship, being that they came up in the industry together. However, what most of those people also don't know is that before Harvey became public with Mac, the comic and Jackson had already been friends from way back. In fact, according to what Samuel L. Jackson has described of their relationship, Mac's home was pretty much open to him whenever he needed a place to stay. Now, it seems hearing Steve allegedly strike up some talk about how he and Mac were on the same path might have triggered the Avengers actor's disdain for the celebrity host. He not only seems to be calling Harvey out for the comparison, but it seems there might be some skeletons in Steve Harvey's closet that only the elites know about. Because from the claims allegedly coming from Jackson, he might be only inches from exposing Steve Harvey's true nature to the world. Knowing Steve also over the years, he doesn't take too kindly to people attacking him, so he just might fire back. What everyone is asking is what exactly it is Steve said about Bernie that affected Samuel L. enough to call him out? Let's get into it. You feel that the beef between Bernie Mac and Steve Harvey was because Steve Harvey was getting a lot of network love during the time and Bernie Mac not so much? Yeah, and then Bernie started to get it. Saying Steve Harvey and Samuel L. Jackson have a volatile relationship would be an overstatement, as the pair don't seem to have anything in common particularly. At first, everyone thought it was Steve's extravagant personality, as most people would agree, was also Jackson's problem. But that wasn't the case. You see, to half the world, Steve Harvey just might be the greatest entertainer to make it out in the industry. Considering the host also has more than three decades of experience, coupled with a barrage of successful TV shows, and stand-up comedy performances to his name, it makes sense that most people think that. In fact, out of everyone he came up with in his early days in the industry, you could say Steve is one of the top names on the record. However, while so many people share this highly held opinion about Steve Harvey, several others feel the opposite for the celebrity host. Some are very open about it, as with this user who wrote, people don't become as successful as Steve doing the right thing. If anything, I'll say he's consistent so you know this is who he really is, while others are not so upfront about their disdain. And this is where Samuel L. Jackson comes up. The Spider-Man actor, unlike most people, has been largely subtle about not liking Steve Harvey so much. But subtle as it may be, he still made it clear on national TV. A few years ago, there were pictures of Jackson and his wife, along with Harvey and his wife, at a vacation spot that appeared online. Since people didn't know much about their relationship back then, everyone assumed they were friends. The headlines at that time even said something like, Steve Harvey, Samuel L. Jackson, and Magic Johnson enjoy July 4th on a fancy yacht with their wives. A few years later, Jackson shared that meeting up with Steve wasn't in his plans at all. He explained that he and his wife were heading to their vacation spot for the year when they happened to bump into the celebrity host along with his wife. This comes as opposed to the motion that they had made arrangements in advance. Steve Harvey, I hear y'all take vacations together on the yacht or something. Well, we get on the boat with Magic and Cookie. Steve and... Marjorie have their own boat.
Looking at Jackson's expression as he spoke about it, it seems clear that the actor wanted the world to know that meeting Steve wasn't anything short of an accident. Now this brings up the question of why Jackson may not be Steve's biggest fan. Turns out it has much to do with Bernie Mac, and you know who had a problem with Mac? Steve Harvey. These days, Jackson's disdain for his industry pair seems to be tied to reports of Steve comparing his life to the one the legendary comic led. And let's just say the Nick Fury actor wasn't exactly having it. For the most part, Part, Mac has been known to draw his motivation for following the path of making people laugh from his family and his culture. In Steve's case, it seems it might have just been about the money right from the beginning. And when money wasn't involved, it was scandals, as there is almost a visible parallel line between how both their lives have gone. Which makes it clear why this comparison would have been difficult for Jackson to stomach. Speaking of the actor, the only reason he's in almost every conversation involving Bernie Mac is that the pair go way back. So much so that everyone in the industry pretty much thought of them as siblings. Amazing. And he pushed me and made me do some things I didn't know I was capable of doing. Um, <laughs> and he kept me from committing homicide most days, too. So he kept me out of prison. Mac and Jackson weren't just actors who worked together. They were good friends. They acted together in the movie Soul Men. But what most people don't know is how close Samuel Jackson and Bernie Mac really were. Jackson has spent years talking about the life Mac led since he passed. In Soul Men, Jackson and Mac played characters who used to be in a band together. They went on a crazy road trip across the country to perform at a concert in memory of their lead singer who had passed away. Sadly, Bernie Mac got sick and died from pneumonia in August after they finished making the movie. It's even weirder that he never saw the movie, Jackson said. The Hitman's bodyguard star called Mac a friend and said the Ocean's Eleven co-stars would attend and perform comedy at Jackson's golf tournament in Bermuda. Outside of filming Soul Men, Jackson said he didn't get to spend much time with Mac while he was alive, as the actor was booked to the brim starring in his show, The Bernie Mac Show, which was a Fox comedy series that aired from 2001 to 2006. We used to talk about blowing up in being famous and doing all this stuff and all of that, said Jackson. Then when he got famous, he was here in LA, and I never saw him because he was too busy doing his TV show every day. I didn't go by and bother him, but I would run into him at functions, and we got to get together. That was who he was, and I appreciate that about him. And I love the fact that when I came to Chicago and I was doing Negotiator, Bernie took care of me. The ending of Soul Men features a dedication to Mac and Isaac Hayes, two real soul men. And guess whose idea it was? Yup, understanding the basis of Jackson's relationship with Mac makes it easy to see how the actor would have a problem with the pair being compared. And if you look at how their lives have gone, you'll probably see it too. Bernie Mac is one of those who easily made it to the top of the list of comedians you could call pioneers in the industry. But you know what they say about great power. It comes with great responsibilities, and it seems it might have been those very responsibilities that led to his untimely demise. Best known today for his hit TV series, The Bernie Mac Show and the historic Kings of Comedy Tour, which was made into a film directed by Spike Lee, the Chicago comedian was a titan among his peers. When I, when I think of in terms of big, you know, it, it, it really wasn't a doubt. I knew I would do well. May looked like he had a breezy ride to becoming an icon, but the comic's reality was far from that. The comedian lost his mother at a young age, as a result of which Mac faced several problems and had to take up several odd jobs to make ends meet. He soon realized that it is humor that keeps a person going in a treacherous journey called life. As such, he decided to focus his attention on stand-up comedy and do his best to entertain people. Although Mac loved the idea of being a comedian since the age of eight. He decided to pursue his passion as a career only at a later stage of his life. I'm a comedian. I, you know, I'm not a black comic. I didn't want a black show. Mm -hmm. I want a show. I make everybody laugh. Talking about his motivation, Mac doesn't believe in comparing himself to anyone. The comic revealed that the only things on his mind right from when he started his comedy journey up to much later in his life was that he wanted to be the best, and he wanted to remain himself while at it. Television, I never watch what somebody else does. It does not matter. Bernie Mac got to do his thing. <laughs> So what did you think? What was your ultimate goal? What did you want to do? To be the best. The comic even revealed in an interview that he didn't care about fame or telling jokes that only appealed to one demographic, even though that according to several people seemed to be his strength. According to Mac, he just wanted to make people laugh regardless of who they are and where they're from, adding that he even tweaked his sound depending on the space he's in. During the interview, one of the spectators spoke about how she knew Mac would become one of the biggest in the world after one night at his show. While you'd expect the already 
already successful comedian to be tooting his own horn at the time, Mac revealed that although he knew he'd eventually come out on top, it was never on his mind. I remember coming seeing you at one of the clubs here in Chicago, like when you first started out. And I told my husband then, I said, he is going to be big. Oh. So she was asking, did you think you were? And you said, no, I knew you were. In his head, his only goal was for him to get better at what he was doing since the end wasn't the money, but rather to get better at what he loved doing. In fact, Mac revealed during the interview that while everyone around him in his early years was focused on money being their motivation, he absolutely hated the idea of money being anyone's motivation. To Mac, it was more like if you're good enough at whatever you're doing, the money was going to come sooner or later. So idolizing money to him pretty much implied that there is a problem somewhere. If you do well, the money will come. That's what I know. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And quit focusing on the money. Right, right. Because it's not about the money. My love for comedy is just unbelievable. Well, let's just say most people interpreted the comic's explanation as a jab at Steve Harvey. As the celebrity host has spent much of his time in the limelight talking about how money might be the most important thing. That's when I went to New York and signed the contract for syndicated radio. It just gave me a little bit of money. I wasn't making what I make now, I make like 10, 10 mil a year off radio. And that kept me at least be able to survive. Wait, did Steve just really call $10 million a little bit of money? Yup, that's exactly what he did. Tells you a lot about how he sees the concept of money. But even outside the money, Steve's life has been mostly marred by controversy after controversy. What takes Steve's way of life even further from how Mac lived his days is that Steve's whole life has pretty much been the opposite of his personal brand. That's right, despite his public image as a family man, famous comedian, sweet actor, and TV host Steve Harvey has been accused of several things, from being a below average Average host, all the way to mistreating his former wife and children for years. At least that's what the streets were saying. I mean, if Steve Harvey is so committed to his family, why has he gone through three different marriages? Doesn't that make you scratch your head a little bit? Well, these days, people are talking how the man appears to have a wandering eye, which is why his past marriage has become a big deal. Steve Harvey flew Winton to Texas, and Mary saw all the bruises on her baby's back. Recently, an activist called Essie Berry came forward to reveal some shocking, dark details about Steve Harvey. And it seems those words may have put a dent on Harvey's reputation badly. And now, it seems people are shocked by Steve's real face, but it turns out that might have only been the tip of the iceberg. See, while Steve Harvey is a well-known comedian, he has also enjoyed success in the entertainment industry as an actor, producer, and writer. The comic is a true master of all trades. Harvey's career, while it may look like it now, was not all always smooth sailing, as he had to put in a lot of hard work to get to the position that he is in today. However, Steve's life also hasn't always been the learning curve he's described it as. That's right, while the celebrity host, who doubles as a life and relationship coach, has repeatedly described the ups and downs of his life as learning experiences for him, it seems that might have not exactly been the case. See, even though Steve has been married twice before his current wife, it seems his previous marriage might have been a little more complicated than you'd expect. Per new news reports, Steve's second marriage was to Mary Shackelford, with whom he had a son named Winton. Despite the fact that they had a son together, it seems their relationship was troubled from the beginning, as in 2005, the pair went through a contentious divorce. So quickly, he moved forward from me to Marjorie. Uh, that was disturbing. Since their split, there have been several narratives floating about what happened during their union, including one from Mary herself, accusing Steve of cheating on her with his current wife, Marjorie Harvey, during the final days of marriage. While Steve refuted the allegation, stating that it was without merit and completely incorrect, everyone saw him go ahead to marry Marjorie almost immediately after their split, which seems to be the evidence of the affair Mary was referring to. I have just really dealt with so much bullying from Steve. From this point, you could say the woman put Steve on blast, exposing who he really was when he's not giving dating advice. Two weeks after, and I'm gonna say attack. Besides the cheating scandal, Mary also accused Steve of attacking their baby son. According to her, she was out for some days after their divorce, and when she came back, she saw her son's face was seemingly covered with bruises. She claims those bruises seem to have been because of Steve. After this incident, she immediately went ahead and sued her ex-husband. According to a magazine page, Mary Harvey went ahead and sued her ex-husband for $60 million citing child endangerment, torture, conspiracy against rights, kidnapping, M, breach 
of contract and intentional infliction of emotional distress. Harvey then went to court against his ex-wife and was successful in getting an injunction against her. Per the judgment, Mary was ordered to keep quiet about the matter and not expose or discuss any of its specifics with the general public. The problem is everyone believes she did not do anything wrong, so why did she need to be slammed with a gag order? To many, this seemed to have pointed to the theory that Steve might have been beside those gruesome activities. Mary, after the case, told a magazine, I didn't violate any court orders. This is about, you're not supposed to be talking to anybody about your divorce. That's what they're saying. I'm like, this is America. Outside of Steve's shady history with his own family, the presenter also seems to have used that shadiness on Bernie Mac while he was alive. You see, a group of comedians became really famous in the 2000s after they did a comedy show called The Original Kings of Comedy. This show made a lot of money and influenced modern comedy a lot. Uh, was that the most successful comedy tour it ever is. at that point? Yes, it was at that point. Okay. The group, made up of four comedians, were Steve Harvey, D.L. Hewley, Cedric the Entertainer, and Bernie Mac. They each had their own way of being funny. They often talked about African-American life in the United States and how it's different from life for white people. Steve was hot. We had the Steve Harvey show, so we had a national TV show. Bernie Mac was the it comedian at the time, and, and then D.L. was hot. He had a TV show. At that time, people thought Steve Harvey was the smoothest in the pack, but the downside to him was that he also liked to tease the audience. He'd make comments about the people sitting in the front row, like their hair, clothes, and what jobs they might have. On the other hand, Bernie Mac had a different style. He was intense, and some of his jokes were about serious real-life stuff. First year we did it, it was just me, Bernie, and... Uh just me, Bernie, and Steve. Right. And Steve closed. It seems like Steve Harvey might have been jealous of Bernie Mac's style, and that led to a long argument. At least that's what one of the people who knows them well has just said. Now the internet is buzzing with this news. You know, Bernie, uh, you know, felt like he didn't want to do it anymore. He was on his own path, and Steve, so, uh, you know, Nothing like that ever happens or doesn't happen for a reason. For a long time, there have been rumors that Steve and the late Bernie Mac had some disagreements during the original Kings of Comedy tour. Now, other members like Cedric the Entertainer are clearing up these rumors, and the results are more explosive than you'd expect. Cedric, who was part of the tour, confirmed that the two comedians didn't always get along. He said, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, they were both strong personalities. You know, they just had different viewpoints. But in the end, they managed to work through it. He shared this during an interview on Shannon Sharp's podcast club Shay Shay. Cedric added that because of the feud, it had prevented them from doing another tour. I think, of course, that was, you know, definitely a contributing circumstance, but I also think that it had a lot to do with the promoter on the thing because he got a bigger head than all of us. The dude that put us all together started to really think was about him. So it started to be that. So it was a lot of those kinds of elements. Is that one of the reasons why you didn't do you did it. You did the first. You did the first part. You did the second part. I, I don't think. I think. You know, of course, like that was. You know, definitely a contributing circumstance. Besides that, there is also the fact that Mac, till his passing, believes Steve was hell bent on stabbing him in the back. In 2003, Mac did an interview with GQ magazine where he said that Harvey was jealous of him and had tried to mess up his chances of getting certain movie roles. Steve later talked about what Mac said in a 2010 interview and shared that he felt hurt by Mac's words. However, people have haven't been very moved by his claims. In fact, other people have even confirmed Mac's statement about Harvey being jealous. One of those people wrote, When Bernie Mac was cast for the Ocean's Eleven dynasty, Steve Harvey went to the director and producer to try and steal the role from him and even told them he would